What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from Zoom again. And this time we are here with Nikita of Derweg and the Freiheit. Thank you so much for being here. I gave that a try. How did I do on the pronunciation? Quite all right. Yeah. Um, it's Derweg and the Freiheit. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, uh, you did a good, uh, good I, job. I was on the phone with my mom this morning. My mom is from Germany, so uh, she was like rehearsing. Right. She was coaching me for a good couple of times, so I did the best <laughs> okay. I could. Big shout out to my mom. But it's so great to have you here. The new album, Nocturne, is absolutely uh, beautiful. What was the thought process behind like the making of this album? Because like it, there's just so many different vibes and so many different atmospheres. What was the sort of like uh, thought process behind the making of Nocturne? Um, well, the basic idea was to um, to finally make a different album, uh, so to say, uh, you know, um, with all the previous albums and especially Finisterre, I, uh, after releasing Finisterre, I had the feeling that um, there could have been so much more new things I could have done. And I was like, when creating Finisterre and recording it, um, I was always like, well, not taking too many risks, just be safe and do what I can. And uh, it sounds cool. And of course, I like the album and people uh, like it and that's cool. But yeah, after the release of Finisterre, I had the feeling that um, there's not too much new things happening in music. And especially in our music, I uh, tried to make it different on Nocturne. So um, you can say it's the most different album in our career so far. So does it have any relation uh, at all to Finisterre or Stellar, or is it? are we going to see sides of uh, Thorweg and Freiheit that we've never seen before? Um, you know, each album, in a way, is a logical development in the band's history and sound. So um, you can definitely hear it's a Devig and Freiheit record, because also, of course, I wrote it, and I wrote all the other uh, album so there's a, a, a logical like line um, between the albums um, but there's not a musical link or something or um, well still the lyrics are really personal and uh, I did the songwriting so that's the basic connection but um, as I said I wanted to try out many new different things on the new album so mm -hmm. that was the basic plan do you feel that the first three singles that we heard, Monument, Immortal, and Morgan, almost serve as a good representation of what the entirety of Nocturne is going to sound like? Or is this just uh, one little taste of the many songs that are on this album? Um, yeah, to be honest, uh, we, um, we picked Morgan as the first single because, in our opinion, it's actually the, the strongest song on the album but not the most different song. Um, so we didn't want to pick, uh, like, for example, Immortal as the first song because it was too different, uh, so to say. And many fans could have the impression then when it's the first single uh, that this, the album sounds completely different, which is not the case. There are different songs on it, but there are still songs like um, Morgan and Monument, for example, that are, um, I would say, rather traditional uh, sound-wise. And um, Immortal is, of course, one of the uh, different songs. And we actually wanted to release it as a second single. But um, yeah, the music video took a bit longer to finish, so we couldn't make it as a second single. So it came third. Yeah. Well, when I first heard Morgan, I thought maybe like it was going to be like the direct follow up to Finisterre. It almost was kind of like the bridge song in a way between the old and the new. Yeah, you can you can say that actually it's, you know, the first third of the song is just melodic blast beat black metal riffing. Uh, so that's in the reign of Finisterre, for example, and then the, the song gets more uh, slower or sluttier in a way, maybe, and um, with different singing styles and also a bass synthesizer uh, in one part. And um, it's still traditional, but still uh, new things happen in this song as well. So uh, it could be used as a very, as a, like a showcase of 
what is happening on the album. Mm -hmm. Do you ever enter the songwriting process with like a preconceived idea of what you want it to sound like? You mentioned that this is a different approach. So like, uh, do you ever like go into songwriting with an idea of how you want it to sound? Or is there a lot of improvising involved and a lot of uh, trial and error? Rather the second thing, uh, like I, um, I don't have a master plan or something when starting uh, writing an album or just new music. Uh, I just don't want to uh, um, sound like uh, a song I, I wrote in the past or an album I wrote in the past. So for me, it's um, important that um, the music develops and uh, it's it's different from, from the previous uh, music I wrote. And that's the main thing, actually. And um, yeah, everything else is coming really natural. I, I don't really like jam or something because I'm alone. I, I, I write the songs alone. You can't really improvise or jam with yourself. Um, and it's not possible to do like songwriting rehearsals with the others because we all live in different parts in Germany and uh, logistically it's very difficult. Uh, but we're, we're, we're cool with this, uh, with this way of working. I work mostly alone in the songwriting phase. And for this album in particular, we decided uh, already in the, in the, uh, when the first songs were finished, we decided to record the album all as a band um, because that didn't happen in the past. It was always Tobias, the drummer and me um, just being in the studio, uh, Tobias uh, playing the drums and after having tracked them, leaving the studio, leaving me the next three or four weeks, doing all the rest by myself. But this time we wanted to make it different, including in involving all the band in the process in the recording and production process, which was uh, the best thing we could do. Yeah, you, isolation is always a great fuel for creativity, but also, uh, you know, combining different artists together and recording it can also bring it new life. I think you have the best of both worlds. I, th I see that it's coming from you, but at the same time to work with other people that that has to I feel like trust is one of the hardest things for any artist to have because especially within a band, yeah. because you're taking your vision and you're trusting people to help elevate it into the future. I mean, that seems to be a very uh, hard stepping stone to take in your uh, path as an artist. Yeah, definitely. Um, I had the feeling that uh, with Finisterre, um, all responsibility of the band, of the band sound, songwriting, production, and also when it comes to live shows, it was all on my shoulders. And I had the impression that in the future with more and more albums, um, uh, this will not be good for me as, as a person mentally. And uh, I thought like, well, I have a great band. These are all my friends. And we did the live album, for example, which showed us we can we can record songs in a live environment all together and there are definitely different energies flowing between the band members that are not visible but uh you can hear them in the music and we wanted to have this on a studio recording as well and that was the basic idea for this album so we recorded it all as a band and finally um i was only responsible for my guitar and the vocals and the other is um very responsible for their own instrument and that was a cool thing definitely takes some weight off your shoulder um and um it, it's funny you um mentioned that as well because i i feel like um do you think that maybe that this is gonna i'm asking this way too soon but like do you think that uh this is gonna dictate uh the future for uh the band and your songwriting in a way like do you think that this opened a lot more new doors in the future or are you not too uh sure yet you're just more focused on this new album cycle <laughs> um right now i i can't really imagine doing it differently um i i think that was the best way we could do an album uh like still me writing songs uh but then having the others adding the last i don't know five percent or even ten percent uh, of the music because even though it if it's just the playing uh, the, the kind of playing or um the interpretation of the music from the others it, it takes the music to a, another level and um i'm i'm super happy about that and also about the the respect the others show me with this kind of uh working mm -hmm. and um 
I don't. I can't say, of course, what the music, uh, what what the future brings. Um, but uh, if logistically it's possible to write um, songs with the other guys as well, maybe we will do this as well in the future sometime. But right now it's really diff difficult. Like everyone's got his job and live live somewhere else in Germany, so we can't really meet up regularly. Are, are you in Bavaria right now? Yeah, I'm in yeah. Bavaria in Würzburg. Oh, wow. Uh, are you near um, uh, Straubing? Straubing, no. Um, that's more south. It's in the Munich area, I think. Yeah, that's where my family's from. So I was uh, All right. wondering if maybe uh, that uh, there was some cool. correlation there. Um, but Yeah, but we will be in Munich, uh, like near Straubing. Uh, we will be there in just a week. <laughs> on 27th, I think. Oh, yeah. Well, that's awesome. Uh, take a stop at and Straubing. I mean, even though Folksfest isn't <laughs> <We're> happening. <laughs> Folksfest isn't happening, but, uh, you know, maybe it w you should play Folksfest. That's what I'm saying every Bavarian band should do. Like, you guys, Obscura, Dark Fortress should all play at a <laughs> Folks Festival. Okay, let's see what the people think about this. <laughs> and, and and make black metal later, Hosen. Just, just an idea. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, for your songwriting, w being a vocalist, do you sometimes think of lyrics or maybe a lyrical concept that could help influence the sound of the music itself? Or have you always preferred to have music before any lyrics came into play? Uh, basically, um, having the music before writing the lyrics was always the way to go for me, um, except for one song on the new album, uh, Haven, which is also one of the um, different songs. Um, these lyrics just emerge when writing the song on an acoustic guitar, basically. So it was a very, very natural, traditional way of writing a song, like uh, really on one guitar and vocal. So on this song, basically both happened at the same time. But uh, for all the other songs and also the previous releases, it was always music first. And then I just well, try to bring me in a certain mood by listening to the music and think about the the, the lyrics and how to where to put them in the song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my own do you, uh, to work. Do you want the music to be open to interpretation or do you try to engage the listener into the lyricism as much as the song itself? <clears throat> I think <clears throat> um, I think our music has the ability to paint pictures in your head. Um, like just with the music, um, that's something I um, experience with myself, but also others saying this about the music uh, we we write, and um, that's a cool thing. So I think having um, more room for interpretation is always, yeah, some kind of um, a special ability uh, of music to have, and I think it's important not to like have a certain message and um, it's it's totally meant like it is uh, it is uh, it is meant uh, can you say it like this yeah. like um, meant to be meant to be yeah uh, I don't want uh, the lyrics and the music to be like um, one hundred percent uh, carved in stone or, or uh, you know um, there's always room for interpretation that's important I think yeah. And, and not to mention with what you were mentioning, like collaborating with other musicians and, you know, like really trusting other bandmates to elevate that. I think that has to maybe enhance the love for, uh, you know, when you create art and you're experiencing it with, you know, a viewer or a listener, I think in the end, their interpretation of it is almost as much as part of the artistic process and the journey. Yeah, that's true. For sure. Yeah. In order to get like that inspiration or that artistic drive, do you almost have to be in a certain place, like in a studio, in order to feel that sort of artistic drive? Or does inspiration sometimes strike when you least expect it? Um, you know, I, I built this studio here where I'm sitting right now, um, uh, just actually for the pur purpose to be creative and uh, of course to work on mixes and my regular job as a music producer to have a great environment to uh, produce music, but also for my own creativity. So um, this place here is very important thing for me to be uh, to get into the creative uh, mindset. 
But um, what is even more important for me is not to have anything else on my mind when being creative. Like I, I can't that's really possible. write a new song. That's huh? po that's Excuse possible. Me? That you you could do that, and not have anything it's, on your mind while being creative. That's I, I didn't think that was possible. Yeah, it's difficult because uh, you know, with a job, uh, I'm I'm very busy and the band is busy, so there are very very small time frames uh, that allow me to be creative actually. But what I did on the new album, and that sounds really strange for for uh, many people maybe, was that I blocked songwriting sessions. Like I blocked two or three weeks um, in my calendar just. Uh, like it is and um and there was nothing else happening like no production uh, no studio work no special like uh, seeing other people or something like that so i could just focus on songwriting and just yeah be be alone most of the time because that is also important for me to just work with myself actually uh, listening to myself and uh what, what what is coming out of me and um you know, I can't do that when I uh, I have work to do from nine to five. Yeah. That's impossible, and that worked worked very well for me. Well, you you're a very prolific artist because in addition to Derwig and the Freiheit, you also you know played with Illusion of Strength as well as a lot of other bands as well. And being a producer has working with other bands, whether being in the band or producing it, allowed you to bring in more stuff or maybe uh, influence you in a way. Or do you try to not like even think about your pro think about another thing when focus on something else? Um, well, most of these like project I worked uh, on like Illusion of Strength or um, there are uh, a more recent one. It's uh, a band from Argentina. It's called Los Males del Mundo. I, I played the, guitar, uh, the bass on it and um, basically produced the record and uh, mixed and mastered it. Mastered it. But um, these bands, Although I'm I'm into the music a lot, but um, it's not my creative outlet, so to say. Uh, um, I the band or the project, the music I uh, I use for my own personal artistic expression is the Weg einer Freiheit, and it will all, always be. I think it's very hard to um, to have like two bands like Der Weg einer Freiheit, two projects um, going on at the same time. If I write songs, I immediately know that they will be on the new Der Weg einer Freiheit record. There's, you know, I can do everything with a band and that's what, also why it, it's called Der Weg einer Freiheit because it leaves me all the freedom I need in music. And um, yeah, basically when I'm creative, I know it will be for Der Weg einer Freiheit. Okay. And I have uh, two more questions for you, uh, but kind of going back to uh, the Bavarian scene, because I mentioned Dark Fortress and Obscura coming from Lanzut and Tulkandra and so many great bands just from yeah. Bavaria alone. Like, I like talking about Bavarian metal because I could finally talk about other German bands that aren't Rammstein or Creator or Accept or Scorpions. <laughs> but like, it, it seems like that for like this black metal or even technical death metal in a way that Bavaria seems to be, like I know that uh, there's a black metal band, uh, Imperium Decadence, uh, from there, and um, uh, I don't know if you ever. Yeah, they're from that. the uh, from the Black Forest, which is the southwestern part of Germany, Baden-Württemberg. Oh, okay. They're not from Bavaria, actually. Oh, okay. Another... Well, thank you for the correction. Uh, no, yeah. no, thank you, because if you didn't correct me, I would have had a nasty YouTube comment do it. So I prefer you do it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you're welcome. Do you? Uh, is there kind of like an active scene in Bavaria alone? Like it seems like that there seems to be a thriving underground for very. Uh, you know, for black metal and technical death metal and so many other bands. Is there just a scene in Bavaria alone or do you prefer to play outside of Bavaria more? I, I can't say it. actually, well, borders, every, every time I think about borders and where um, music evolves, it's like, uh, why are there borders actually um, like uh, on a geographical map? So I can't really say if Bavaria in particular is responsible for this output of black metal and death metal. But yeah, the bands you mentioned, they all emerge from this uh, Dark Fortress um, group, basically. Like, uh, I think uh, Victor um, 
I don't know the last name. He also have a studio and uh, he records all the bands like Tool Contra, Dark Fortress, uh, Obscura, and um, I think he's and and plays in um, in uh, Trypticon as well. So he's pretty much responsible for everything what's happening uh, there. Um, but apart from that, well, there are so many other regions in, in Germany and not really states, just regions where many great bands evolve. Um, yeah. And uh, But what I've noticed, though, depending on the state in Germany or the region, it's like a different genre. Like when you go like northwest, it's like all metalcore. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like like I know that Stuttgart is a very big metalcore city in a way, and then I know that like uh, you go up north and it's like a big rock and roll city. It, it's really fascinating. I'm, I'm starting to think if, if geography does has something to do with uh, yeah. the with the style. I, maybe I'm just overthinking well, it, but yeah, I, I think so too. Well, if you look like uh, look on different countries, they all have their different culture and folk music and everything and especially in black metal for example i think the folk music melodies uh sometimes have an important role in the music like and especially in bavaria like bands like luna aurora for example um they're not active anymore i guess but um uh, they were also a big influence for my music and uh they emerged from bavaria in the southern part and were influenced by the Alps, for example, and their traditional uh, music and culture there. And uh, you always have, and like Scandinavian bands, Norwegian bands, they all sound different from each other because they, they're they coming from different cultures. And you can hear this in the music as well. Yeah, you, you know what death metal bands are from Gothenburg and you know what death metal bands are from Stockholm, just yeah, in Sweden that's alone. True. It's And here in the US too, I mean, if you're, traditional death metal you're from tampa if you're hardcore you're from the northeast <laughs> if you're you know if you're from the mid if you know you're from california you're more into punk or metalcore so like it really is like a diverse thing and the final question i say for you is the most difficult question are you ready okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's about songwriting again but how do you know okay. when a song is done yeah that's very um very difficult to answer um i have the feeling that uh every riff and every part i wrote I, I write um i have to be connected to and it's impossible to tell how this works but if i don't feel this connection i know that the song isn't finished but if i feel the connection throughout all the song um in the end, I have this feeling and I know, well, okay, I did a great job. I like the song, I feel connected and that's it. And of course you always can work and work and work on a song and you can maybe make it better, but um, you can always just do the best you can at the very moment. And sometimes you have to force yourself to do, to say, I'm done. And that's the best you can do at this very moment. And it's very important, I think, for an artist and a band to uh, to know uh, the point when you say it's finished and you release new music. Because each time you release new music, you um, you get all the reactions by other people, by not just yourself, uh by the fans by your bandmates by everyone around you and with these reactions you can uh it's a big influence for new music and so if you will never um stop working on a song and never release it you will be in a in a loop uh, yeah. basically and so it's very important to to know this point i call it songwriting purgatory yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. So uh, before we go, I want to thank you uh, so much for your time today and for such a great conversation. Uh, is there just uh, anything else that you would like uh, to promote? Like uh, you mentioned that you're uh, doing a show in Munich uh, very soon. Could you maybe bring Derwig and our Freiheit to the United States one day? We would love to have you here. Uh, we already talked with the label about it, and it's it's one of the main priorities um, for the next years. I can't say more, um, but uh, the the feedback we're receiving from the U.S. already with with Finistère, for example, it's it's increasing more and more, and 
um, we really just want to explore the US and all the people and uh, give back the, the love we, we receive from the people. And that's only possible with live shows uh, or maybe doing interviews like this, which is a great thing. And so thank you for, for this opportunity and your time. Um, yeah, but we really uh, would love to come and play one day, hopefully next year. It's very uncertain, but 2023. All yeah, right. This might be the year, hopefully. Who knows? Who knows at this point? It's the 2020s. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much, everybody. We are here with Nikita of Derweg and the Freiheit. Be sure to check out their brand new album, Nocturne, coming out via season of Miss this Friday. This is Alex from Heavy New York, and we will see you next time.